The Gulf Coast in the U.S. is a stunning place. With its long sandy beaches and great weather, you'd think more Americans would live there. But they don't. Let's figure out why this less crowded area is still an amazing and incredible part of the country. Welcome to Travel Treasures, your passport to adventure, valuable financial insights, and global exploration. Hit that subscribe button and let's embark on a journey that will expand your horizons and empower your mind. And here's why there are only few residents living along the Gulf Coast of the United States. Let's dive in. The area we're discussing today is the Gulf Coast, which is on the southeastern side of the country. It's interesting because it has many cities and towns, even though it only has around 10 million people living there. This is in contrast to the eastern side of the country, which has over 250 million people. Despite this, the Gulf Coast's location and pleasant weather should attract more people to live there. If we use the Cuppin method to understand climate, the entire Gulf Coast region would be considered temperate. This means it has consistent rainfall but hot summers, which makes it a good place for people to live as long as they're okay with the humidity. The southern part of Florida has a similar climate and has grown a lot because people from the cold northern regions have been moving there. Unlike some parts of the country, the Gulf Coast has plenty of water. The Mississippi River, one of the world's biggest rivers, flows through it. There is also the Alabama River and many smaller rivers in the the area. So the lack of water isn't a reason for its relatively low population. Historically, though the region is less populated now, it experienced a big growth spurt in the past. Between 1800 and 1900, the population of the Gulf Coast region grew from a few thousand to over one million by 1860. However, a significant portion of these people were slaves. It's estimated that around 55% of the population in Mississippi, which is part of this region, were slaves by 1860. This period ended after the U.S. Civil War, leading to a large number of people leaving the region. The Gulf Coast is a beautiful area in the United States known for its great beaches, diverse cultures, and southern hospitality. Despite its appeal, most of its cities are small, except for New Orleans, which isn't even among the top 40 metropolitan areas. There's a reason for this, though. In the past, when slavery existed, many people escaped to the northern states to get away from it. So, after slavery ended, newly freed people also started moving to different parts of the country. Back then, most people in the southern states were black, and with their newfound freedom, they had the choice to go anywhere. Many of them moved north or west, rather than staying in the south. However, a massive movement of African Americans to the north didn't happen until around 1910. This is when the Great Migration began. Around 6 million African Americans moved north over several decades to escape the harsh laws of segregation known as Jim Crow laws in the south. But it wasn't just about escaping discrimination. The the economy played a big role too. The southern part of the U.S. relied more on farming, while the north was quickly becoming more industrialized. In the 1920s and 1930s, a lot of people moved to cities in the north for factory jobs and a better quality of life. The Great Depression made things even tougher, as farming jobs became scarce. The northern cities like Detroit, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, Chicago, and New York City had more industries, which made them more attractive places to live. Even though industrialization isn't as important nowadays, its impact on this region still remains. Let's address the recent population trends. States like Louisiana, Alabama, Georgia and Florida grew between 2010 and 2020. Mississippi's population went down slightly. Generally, people are moving to this region, but there's an interesting pattern. Florida and Georgia grew faster, but most of this growth didn't happen near Gulf Coast area. Looking at the big cities in our region except for two, most of them are not growing much. New Orleans grew by about 11% since 2010 and Tallahassee grew by 8%. However, cities like Lafayette and Baton Rouge in Louisiana, Jackson in Mississippi, Mobile in Montgomery in Alabama, and Pensacola in Florida had slow growth or even got smaller during this time. One of the main reasons why people seem to be avoiding this region is the lack of job opportunities, and this is worsened by inadequate infrastructure. The American Society of Civil Engineers gave Louisiana and Mississippi a D-plus grade in their recent report card, mainly due to 
problems of the roads, bridges, and drinking water. Alabama got a C minus, which is a bit better. Georgia and Florida received better grades, but the investments they're making aren't mostly going to our Gulf Coast area. This has a domino effect. With not much investment in infrastructure, businesses and industries are less likely to set up shop here. And without a strong economy, things like education suffer. States like Mississippi, Louisiana, and Alabama have some of the lowest rates of people holding bachelor's degrees in the whole country. This doesn't mean people from those states aren't going to college, but many of them end up leaving after getting their degrees. The recent water crisis in Jackson, Mississippi, for example, doesn't make the situation any better. Who would want to move to a state where the water isn't safe to drink? But there are two other major events that hit this region really hard. Talking about this region means talking about Hurricane Katrina and the Deepwater Horizon oil spill. In 2005, a super powerful hurricane hit the whole region, especially New Orleans. The damage was unbelievable. New Orleans alone lost around 30% of its people between 2000 and 2010. And the storm caused over $150 billion in damage overall. Cities like Gulfport, Mobile, and Pensacola were also hit hard. This storm's effects spread through the entire region. Just five years later, when things were getting better, an oil rig off the coast of Louisiana and Mississippi started leaking a massive amount of oil. It took almost five months to stop the leak. By that time, more than 210 million gallons of oil had spread through the Gulf Coast, hitting this region hard. This practically stopped all economic activity in the coastal towns that relied on tourism. Although both of these events happened over a decade ago, they were close enough in time to create about a decade of economic struggles. The Gulf Coast region is starting to grow again, but maybe not as quickly as it could. Houston, South Texas, and the cities in southern Florida are growing much faster. But as these places become more expensive, there might be a population increase in this region once again. In summary, the Gulf Coast region has faced challenges in terms of infrastructure, industry, and disasters like Hurricane Katrina and the oil spill. These difficulties have affected its growth and economy, leading to lower educational rates and slower development compared to other areas. While the region is slowly recovering, it's not growing as fast as it could. However, with changes in affordability in other places, there's potential for a population increase in the Gulf Coast region in the future. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Travel Treasures. We hope you enjoyed it. Remember, life is a grand expedition and here at Travel Treasures, we are committed to making every step of your journey count. If you're passionate about travel, fascinated by finance and intrigued by the world's geography, be sure to hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell and be part of our growing community. Until next time, safe travels, happy exploring and keep prospering!